into my basketball. Every time I rock, man, this is how we rap and rock. Peace to my man, now we got the camera out. Every time I spit it, cross over the All right, hello everyone. This is Josh, also known as Yashu, and you're tuning into episode 37 of the TLY Talks podcast. You know, it's going to be out on all platforms soon, so definitely uh, tap in. Uh, today, we have two other special guests uh, here today in the building. We already had them on the platform for interviews and also for podcasts, too. You already saw, like, his podcast in February, and you already saw his other interview in january of 2021 we have dawson back on the pod and animation for his first time on the pod but back on the platform how are you guys doing today guys good man good good to see you been a minute yeah man nah, it's been a dope second too you know like just pulling up to like a lot of events you know we just recently like tapped in um at uh dawson's uh, gallery and it was like a dope experience yeah, uh, yeah. so far and yeah i mean you have like a lot of stuff uh going on uh, and we'll definitely like speak more on that you know so yeah we've been we've been connecting off screen <laughs> and doing doing a lot of stuff yeah which is cool nah for sure i know that you uh guys have like a new project uh coming out soon you know annie you have your uh, own project uh out coming soon uh annie um you know i want to talk uh, more about that so like that's literally going to be like the first question so what can fans expect for this upcoming project and what's the creative process and inspiration for that uh in terms of like what to expect uh i I don't know you can't you can't necessarily expect what you're gonna hear because it's super different from everything that i've put out before but just kind of expect to just hear something new i guess but uh creative process i've just been i don't know i i started listening to a lot of different kinds of music and started to experiment and um just just explore with new sounds and step away, step out of my comfort zone and step away from kind of like what I'm used to and stuff. But I've been working on the project for over what two, three years now. Two years. Oh, so yeah, true. it's been a minute. I've been uh, it's been a, it's been a long process, but it's been there's been a lot that's gone into it and it's it's been perfected. So I'm super I'm, I'm excited for it to go out. It's definitely uh, the piece of work that I'm most confident in out of what I've made yeah. in the past. So. No, one hundred percent. And are there gonna be like any like features on this project? Like any producers that are like tapping in and like what's like the track listing so far? Uh producers. I worked with a handful of different producers, uh, from the internet mainly. I don't know if I I think yeah, I think majority was just like collabing through the internet. Um shout out my guy Beadzoid in Kazakhstan, yo. Cooked up uh cooked a couple of tracks with, <laughs> with that guy and uh yeah we, we we've still been cooking up but uh in terms of features um i've been working with the the same homies i've been working with for a long time and recording with um you know the same dudes but i kind of tried to get some some new names on this project and maybe some some names that will like surprise people and yeah. i guess uh i don't know names that are, are a little bit like bigger than just like the local homies and like people that i've connected with like yeah. in the underground and stuff like that um biggest one being mick jenkins which uh, is super exciting and i'm, I'm super excited for people to hear that uh, and, and to have that out on it so yeah no i'm definitely and you know i was actually just uh wondering too like how did you actually secure like a uh, mick jenkins feature like like what was that uh process like in that sense uh he was super chill man he honestly i, I just emailed him uh so i got a hold of his of his email that he uses for like beats and feature inquiries and stuff like that and i sent him a few tracks uh he i sent him one that i made uh like right after he responded to me and then he was like send me one more let me hear it and then i kind of was like listening through the stuff that i had with opens on it and i don't know none of it was like quite right i didn't want to send him anything that wasn't perfect so i made another track that like the next day and i sent him that and then he actually ended up popping on the second one so true true. and like what's like the actual like backstory of that project and um you know um what how is it like different from like all the other projects that you've uh, worked with like in the past um the sound is just again like super different um i would describe it as like a alternative experimental kind of project um and i I came from a background of just like pure hip-hop and like old school rap music and stuff like that so i've definitely expanded the sound and like changed it up um and in terms of like the rollout and everything for it me and this guy have just put in aspects of everything we've created in the past like all into one so i mean we have just like a month of like pre-rollout before the before the project is put out and then just the 
a bunch of stuff to put out after too so i mean it's just like it's it's really well supported and it's it's like again like good music that i'm confident in and there's a lot of just like other standpoints that are just strong that that hold yeah. that hold with it and i don't know it's, it's a cool theme and i think that people will, will connect with the with the oh, style sure. of it and stuff i don't know what do you think would you have anything to say about that creative <laughs> process wait repeat the question again um so like you know just like more so on like the backstory and you know like how it's like different from like other projects um like how do you feel like about the backstory right now like i don't know if you want to give like a synopsis no, for sure like he said we've been working on it for two full years since rvms was finished this was kind of the first step of like what's next for him um realistically like as a listener to him but then also like as like his brother kind of thing it feels the most him like his creative process was really just buckling down and like finally putting the hours in to make what he wanted to make in terms of like how we executed it realistically we've been like working on the rollout for a year now so we've really just been like accumulating like a lot of things from everywhere um and expanding on the ideas that we had and i think we just gave ourselves a lot of time for this one which was probably the biggest difference compared to the last ones was that we really honed in on one thing and like kind of perfected it this time which is like a dope feeling Ah, uh, true, man. Now, nah, most definitely. And um, what's your like role on like on this project? And um, just to add like with one more question, like what sort of like emotions can like fans expect uh, from this? Like when they like listen to it? Yeah. Um. Honestly, I wear a lot of hats on this one. Like um, the one that I give myself as the creative director. Um, basically, the first track that he gave me was the cracks, and after that, we kind of sat down and talked about you know what could we do together for this and. Uh, from that point, we were location scouting for a couple months without even shooting anything. We were just looking at spots and places we could go. Um, and so I really took like a a bit, a lot of time just to make sure that his imagery was as it needed to be. Oh, and then what was the second part? Sorry, my <laughs> uh, like um, I think this is like kind of like a closer one. But like, you know, what emotions can fans like expect like when they listen to it, like when it's like released, like in its entirety? Yeah. Um, in terms of what other people are going to expect, I don't really know because I have a different ear and experience for this project as everybody else. Oh. Having like been shooting with him this closely for four to five years now, like there are tracks on this project that made me cry the first time I heard them. The last track, Take Over the World, brought tears to my eyes. I know our brother Kai also had the same experience with that track. There's a lot of things that's just hearing him finally accomplish what he's accomplishing. It's 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 really big for us and so i think the fans will have some of that too seeing his journey thus far i think this is really a big 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 step for him and i think he'll experience a lot of the same things that we did yeah most definitely we'll uh, definitely like link the project soon like when it's like released on all platforms too and you know we'll definitely uh tap in and support you the way you know so <laughs> all right i want to get into like these uh, like other uh questions uh, for a bit too so we already got your uh backstories on like where you grew up and everything else too but um how did you two actually meet and tell us more on the backstory on that? I started working at Don's when I was 15. He was also working at Don's at the time. We literally flipped burgers together for like probably like a year or something. Yeah, we didn't and really then, talk that much at that time. Nah, like not at all. And then probably like a year goes by after he leaves. Um, I showed up to his release party and I'd been shooting for a year around that time. And so the balance release party. Yeah. So I had this like free release party for one of my projects. It was in like 2019, I think, right? Yeah. And then uh and yeah, it was in our like hometown, Newmarket. So a uh, bunch of bunch of just people that I like knew from school and stuff like that came through. And then he happened to come through. And then yeah, we shot after that. I pulled up and I it was literally at the end of it. I was like, brother, if you ever need any shots or anything like yeah. that, like don't hesitate yeah. to ask. And immediately after, like a week yeah. later, we were shooting Dirt Gang. And then, yeah, it just kind of took off from there. Nah, most definitely, man. Like, I definitely see, like, the dope relationship and, like, everything else, too, that you guys have. And, you know, a common bond that you have. Because I think you guys are also, like, inclusive in, like, the ideas that you want to work out, too. And, you know, to speak more on that, like, what, simil- like, what similarities uh, do you guys have that, you know, you'd notice uh, within each other? And, like, you know, what were some things uh, that you've learned uh, from each other, like, when being creative? To be honest, I think we're super different and that's why we like work really well together because he's like super like planned out and like, I don't know, he like pictures everything before he does it 
and I'm very just like go with the flow and like let the ball roll. So I think there's like kind of like a happy medium where we find like a good balance when we work together. Oh, true. Sometimes we want to kill each other, but <laughs> most of the time yeah. we want to kill each other. <laughs> yeah, I but, um, yeah. I think the other thing too is that in the four years that we've been doing this, there's a lot of people that have been like with us at the times that a lot of unfortunately aren't here anymore. And so I think the biggest thing in our relationship is just that we're both so dedicated to what we do that it just kind of feeds off of each other. Um, I think that's probably the biggest connection between us. It's just that neither of us have ever stopped doing what we do. Yeah, no, most definitely. And when you said like something that, you know, at times, like when sometimes it could be like irritable, like sometimes uh, when it gets too intense, like it kind of reminds me of this uh, pop song. If this tour doesn't uh, kill me, like I will have to something like that. And, you know, it's like, you know, being around people for so long that at times you just like want to kill, like kill each other, like in that sense, too. But like, you notice like that love, like overweighs the hate e either time. And, you know, at times, you know, there's going to be like differences that you guys have. But then when you find that love that you both have, you know, like it works out either way and it like helps out like in the long run, like in that sense, too. And I definitely noticed it like from the start until now that you guys still have like a uh, strong relationship uh, to this day and all that. So, yeah. For real. Yeah, no, we definitely couldn't do what we do without each other kind of thing. Like, Annie wouldn't be half the project it is without, you know, what we've done for it. And I wouldn't be anywhere near close to what I've done without him pushing me. So, yeah, no, most definitely, man. And, you know, animation, I want to get back on to, like, all the other stuff that you've done. Um, Because uh, since uh, recently, since our uh, last uh, interview, you know, you dropped a project with your boys, Conglomerate, and then you dropped, like, a lot of singles too, like Long Story, Ferdy with New, like New, honestly, is like one of my like favorite, like Toronto artists, like right now, just with what he's got going on and yeah, like, yeah. you know, also Golden as well too. So to speak more on all of those, like what were like the inspirations and creative processes for like those projects and singles? Um, Yeah, so I'll start with the, with Conglomerate. So that was like, that, that project came super naturally. So like I said, I, like my favorite stuff comes kind of just like, you know, when you're going with the flow, you're just rolling with it, doing your thing. Um, so that project came just like it was super fun to make. And that's why it's kind of just like a fun project, you know, party music, like pop music, um, kind of just uh, I started cooking up with Gord and, and Jost. I knew them from a while back, but we really, really, really locked in together last year. Um, and they helped me a lot creatively because they were super... I don't know. Almost, I had writers writers block for a while, and I was like slowly working at Annie, kind of doing my thing. And then they they came through and they really inspired me. Um, we were just like making all these collab tracks with like no direction really. And then again, that's that's kind of how the project came to be. We were just making a bunch of songs with the homies, and and it was just like we liked a lot of them, and so we we picked our favorites, we put them all together, and and we put them out. We must have recorded freaking two hundred tracks last year all together, like collectively, man. We were. We were just uh, we were just cooking up in the basement. And it was just just those vibes, but um, that's also why I kind of stepped away from like the idea of having the main homies on Annie, um, and just having like a few again kind of bigger features, yeah, new features, yeah, yeah. people that I haven't worked yeah. with before, um, because I have a lot of music out with the homies. I have a lot of music that I'm gonna put out with the homies, um, but I just really wanted Annie to kind of stand alone and just be different from from the other stuff uh and then the new yeah new is is for sure one of my favorite toronto artists man i've been listening to him for a long time so that was a super cool opportunity to come by uh so we actually both opened uh an uno the activist show and i knew that he was opening the show and i was hoping to catch him because i you know I, again I, I rock with his music and i was hoping to maybe seize an opportunity uh and then i went up on stage and I, when i came off stage he happened to be the next set so he was literally standing at the side of the stage and i was like yo man i fuck with you he's like you know rock with you too and, yeah. and we kind of we got talking and stuff and uh yeah we made the track hopefully i'll get to work with him more but yeah. uh definitely a cool track he just put out his project so yeah shout out new um yeah. i was telling him that shit that shit's fire so yeah he, he's a he's a dope artist for sure um and then golden okay sorry i'll do long story first uh long story came from a discord challenge actually so shout out niz uh we we're on niz uh this twitch streamers discord doing this challenge uh and then i ended up making it with these two uh producers and it was like one of the coolest songs i got to be a part of because it was just so different for me um and being that i was kind of trying to steer into a different lane with my new stuff i thought it was like 
just i don't know something that i really fucked with so i wanted to put it out i asked the producers if they were down put it out featuring them um and yeah i don't know it's a it's a cool track it's super fun too and then golden was literally i saved this one for last because it was literally the inspiration behind annie uh so i made golden and and it really just sparked kind of like a different sound for me and it was the first time that i really like stepped away from like the whole hip-hop like I, I i've always been the kind of artist that wants to be versatile and try to make different styles of like you know music but i've always kind of stayed within the lanes of like hip-hop and pop um but golden was the first so song where i really like i listened to it and i was kind of like oh this is me like you know it, it was it was super outside of the box for me um and then yeah after that i was like i want to make a whole project oh, kind of with with this in mind so oh, true yeah and even now uh, with uh last life too i think uh, that's uh, sort of like similar to that or yeah last life is another one that kind of just uh yeah i recorded it on cardinal's beat shout out cardinal also mixing the project oh, right now <laughs> as we speak <laughs> oh, um but yeah no he he sent me the beat i recorded on it kind of had fun with it there's a lot of like repeat bars a lot of just like you know, again, yeah, like repetitiveness, just yeah, rhythms, yeah. just kind of, kind of sounds to, to try to try to get stuck in your head, um, and not being used to that. Again, like being used to bar for bar for bar and like like rap and that kind of thing is like, yeah, it was for sure kind of in that lane. That's why I wanted to put that one out too, yeah. for sure, for sure. Yeah, and, and then this guy shot the video for that as well. So, <laughs> oh, true. I hate that track. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it so yeah. much. Nah, I got you, man. <laughs> But um, you know, those singles uh, that we talked about, like, are they all gonna be on any, or are you thinking about like using them for like another project sometime? Just they're all gonna remain singles except for Golden. Golden oh, will be on the project. Yeah, true, true. No, most definitely. And you know, like securing a new a uh, new feature, it's like uh, pretty interesting too. You know, because you know, with him, you know, he reminds me of Eddie Camino so much with the vocals. Like when you hear like a new song, you know, you kind of get that whole like I'm it na 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 na. Like with Eddie Camino, it's like something similar like that. And mm -hmm. I noticed that those two like kind of like intertwine like with the whole scene together. But it's like two different like sounds like when you put them like at balance like it could be similar but like their songs are totally different but like the comparison with their vocals it's like interesting too you know so yeah uh, for sure yo for sure oh true. yeah no his sound is his sound is super unique and that true, true. Is dope different no uh, no nah, nah, most definitely man and you know with this collaborative uh project uh like conglomerate like what made you decide on you know even like doing a collab uh project like and making it like very different from like you know your regular like projects where it's just like you or like some other artists as well too um i mean i'm always recording with other artists because i think it just helps me creatively like even when i was recording annie i was recording with other artists obviously um but again it just kind of came naturally like gordon and joe hit me up and they were like yo we're trying to record more they they weren't recording quite as seriously as i was before last year um but they were like we really want to like start taking it seriously and then they started coming through um and again like we just it, it's like other artists will understand like maybe one in you know however 20 yeah. 30 tracks you you make it you're like yeah i actually want to release this for people to hear you know what i mean so it was like again we cooked up hundreds of tracks last year and we were like well there's i don't even remember how many were on the project like 16 17 that we were like we want people to hear these for real we want we want them to go out yeah so we just we just made a project out of them yeah not most definitely man and you know to talk more about you know you performing at like other events too um how did like the social outcast like affiliation come about and how was it like you know opening up for the likes of like nascar allo like space fan sack and like uno the activist like at all their shows and all that uh it was super cool man so like getting back from covid Shows kind of started to pick up again, um, and the homie Solo, shout out Sammy, um, was doing a release party for his new project that he made, um, and I pulled through. It was just at like a at like a bar, and then that was how I met Social Outcast and those guys, and then they ended up putting me on a couple smaller shows, and they were lit. So I thankfully got the opportunity to play the couple bigger shows, and they they were also super dope, yeah. and yeah, vibes were vibes were great. Yeah, it was a good times. That's true and you know like you know even like performing at those events too uh like nascar's uh nascar allo space Zack, and like you know uno the activist like how was it like you know performing for like you know bigger crowds than you know what you've experienced uh before too and you know how was like interacting uh, with those guys uh like in that sense uh it was cool yeah it was uh it was good i mean we we played the young tory show back before covid that was like 
years ago. And then we, we played a couple of shows in uh, like Thunder Bay and Ottawa. And there, there, there were some people out at those and they were, they were good for sure. But um, yeah, I mean, again, it's always good vibes. You just got to control the energy and, and uh, yeah, no, as long as you're, you're confident, you do your thing. Like everyone has a good time. It's, yeah. it's always good. I love performing. It's my yeah. favorite thing. So nah, most definitely, man. And you know, we'll definitely get on to like this other question too, because you know, you actually hosted your own event where all your homies like uh, performed in that sense too, like at a small bar on like college street and all that. So yeah. You know, how was it like, you know, hosting your own co- concert last year and like having those people uh, perform, you know, instead of like being, bringing like bigger rats or like, bigger acts or like one-known artists like in that same range as you? Like, what was that like, that vibe and experience like? Um, it was good. Again, that was just, that was a good show. Um, we we'd done a few of those like smaller type shows like before COVID, and then again we got we kind of got to get back to them. But that show was super fun because I put on like a bunch of the homies I hadn't like played shows and stuff before that I that I again started working with last year, and, and that was cool. So oh, it was, sure. it's always nice to get people on stage and and see them do their thing. No, I'm definitely man, and you know it's like a very unique importance to like you know like you know with having like the homies on versus like you know working with like you know bigger racks or like bigger people like in that sense too and you know like putting your homie on homies on in that sense so it's like um you know in terms of your experience and like what you've noticed in the industry like how do you guys like value like the importance of like friendships and putting your people on is it something that the industry uh, needs more or would it like take time in that sense start that question i mean you know isolation had like five photographers in it um and it's something that I think the industry definitely needs more. So I think both of us have tried to create opportunities for the people that, you know, support us and stuff like that. And I think when you're making shit with people, it's a lot better than making shit on your own kind of thing. So I think the industry definitely needs to kind of step up a little bit in the collaborative field personally. But yeah. Yeah. The thing is that connecting is so important and there's like artists and, and people at all different levels of the industry and the problem is that the people that are in a certain place in the industry and that are able to offer opportunities, a lot of the time are the slimy ones and they're the ones that'll rip people off. And then they break the trust of the other people that are trying to connect. And then it's just like a chain. And that's like a huge issue is just like, it's just like a lot of the industry. I won't even necessarily name it as part of the industry, but like a lot of people because they know all these people in the lower end of the industry want it so badly they'll give anything for it they take yeah. advantage of those people and it just like yeah. it just like spoils the whole thing yeah. no, because like you know creating like a natural friendship and like you know knowing that person instead of like you know creating like a forced relationship that you know wouldn't really work out either way too because we've seen that like with other people like in the, in the industry too and then it just happens to kind of backfire but like when people actually have like actual like friendships like it kind of goes like a long way like unless like a, detri- a detrimental thing would happen like you know with money or with, with other stuff and all that too and it's just kind of like steering away from like the tribulations that kind of hinder like that impact in that sense too so now i definitely agree on all that yeah yeah like if you're an underground artist you've been scammed don't yeah. lie you've been scammed yeah it's happened Nah, uh, most definitely, man. Um, I'm just gonna uh, like speak on this other question uh, too because I know like this is like a high like importance for you. I know like you've been posting on TikTok like crazy for people to get to get to know like your music and all that to kind of stream and all that. And I think it's like working so far too. Like I, I do see like the traction and like you know the amount of content and viewership that people are seeing it. So you know, to do you feel like finding a way to make your music go viral or have your content go viral on TikTok is a fair, creative, effective, like, marketing strategy proposal for artists to use, or does it diminish uh, one's, like, artistry in that sense? Man, TikTok's a struggle. I, I don't, I don't like, have a negative opinion about it, but I don't have a positive opinion about it. I've, I've been posting TikToks because, like, I, I'm a firm believer as an artist, you should try to tackle all aspects and you should take any possible opportunity that there is to, yeah. like, get yourself out there and have people hear you. But it's tough. It's hard. I mean, look at like, you know, shout out Dom Valley, but like, look at his numbers on TikTok. Yeah. You know, he was cr- going, cr- and this is not not to fault him at all, but he was going crazy on TikTok, right? Yeah. And it's like his numbers have just completely plummeted. Not to say he's not still doing his thing. And he's, you know, I mean, he's still out here. Shout out yeah. Dom. I fuck with him. He's dope. But like the algorithm can like 
carry you so high and then just like you know yeah. drop you off and it's yeah. again not to say it's great that he's still yeah. out doing his thing it's just not not every artist is that lucky to be able to be like not 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 again not to say that he's lucky but not every artist is like yeah. gonna get that big on tiktok and like stay there you yeah, know what no, i mean most definitely and you know to even like speak more on that i think it's like because you know people are more like outside nowadays it's like no one's going to create like content like outside as much anymore as they used to like back when it was like the pandemic because you know when we were like all like housed in and you know doing our own things you know it was like an important time to be creative to kind of get people to like watch content but like as soon as like these uh live events happened as soon as all these restrictions were like lifted you know that's when like you know a lot of people are going back to like the regular lives and all that to do their own thing and i feel like it is a little bit hard for artists too because it's like now it's like you're gonna have to do it like the natural way for like live shows and all that to get people to like tap in and all that you know so mm. yeah for sure and just to add like this one thing um have you cre like curated your tiktoks to kind of make it in more of the relation to the album so like when focusing on any like have you created like a lot of like tiktoks for people to focus on so that you know they know that the project is dropping uh yeah i try to yeah yeah i've been mostly just previewing snippets from from the project itself oh, so true. true do you ever feel like that project might have a social media focus on it or like for the focus of the project do you want like people to kind of view it a different way to like view it like outside the whole like social media room and all that uh i mean i definitely like for people to again i'll take exposure any way it comes but i would definitely like for people to listen to any of my music as as music you know oh, true. And, and i mean i guess any music in general i feel like should yeah. definitely be separate from social media i mean it's cool to find it on social media but it sucks when a song gets completely yeah overplayed on tiktok before yeah. it even comes out and you don't even want to listen to it anymore type yeah. of, you know but uh, live shows making a stronger sh uh, return since like the fall of like 2021 do you feel like that live music has started to get back to normal since the pandemic or is it sort of like within that realm of like how it, it should be formed like during that pandemic no it's definitely back to normal which is blessed because i was i was scared for a little bit for sure um but yeah i mean i've been to a bunch of concerts and local events and back to playing shows and stuff like that it's it's totally back to normal thankfully but there was definitely a time there during covid where i was like man like we might we might not be able to get back to shows like i, I don't know it, it was crazy but yeah no it's definitely it's definitely back everyone's out there doing their thing which is nice because the i don't know the the real life community is important again i think music should be separate from social media and stuff and it's like cool when people are able to do their thing on social media and connect and stuff like that but it's also you know crazy when certain people are so wrapped up in it that that's like they 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 see social media more real than real life yeah. and it's like if you've been in those local artists small shows small events small communities like around those people and you felt that energy you know that that is special and that is something you cannot experience unless you're there and you're in it yeah. Oh, most definitely because you know with smaller shows versus like you know bigger shows too because with large venues like security is like a main importance you, oh. you know like they'll always have like that whole yeah. pit with <laughs> security guards but like you know the photographers and like content people are kind of like doing their thing for uh, free songs and then you're out and all that versus like a smaller show when you know there's like limited access to security you know making it feel like more wholesome more intimate and all that so i do notice the difference between like the smaller shows and like you know the bigger shows and all that because there's usually like a weird like mainstream like incentive to like within like uh, bigger shows and all that you know like i think they're promoting you know stuff that's like kind of outside that realm versus like when it's like a small event it's you know more natural more organic you know not a lot of stuff uh, popping by but you know it's more relatable you know you can actually like interact with that artist and actually get to know them more and all they know so 100 yeah, sure. no honestly like from the shows that i've shot and shit like that um Going back to like Scotiabank Arena with Nav, Travis Scott, Meek Mill, walking through that arena to get to that pit is like the most painful experience. You have to like have somebody hold your hand and then you have to like be passed off to like eight different security guards, never get to talk to any of the artists or anything. Don't really yeah. get to like talk to the other creatives you're working with yeah. compared to like his shows where everyone fills into one room. He stays yeah. after his sets played kind of thing and just to talk to everybody about like what they thought, if they enjoyed it and shit. Yeah. And I think also, like, like like you said, connecting with that artist is a huge thing to the point where there are people who have pulled up to his shows who don't know him personally, but have just listened to his music. 
and they're able to kind of see what like, where yeah. his mind's at they're yeah. able to like talk to him get selfies with him kind yeah. of like expand on like see what's coming next where yeah. you know for travis scott the best you're gonna get is him carrying around like utopia bro briefcase right <laughs> that's it yeah. but like it, it really like allows those smaller venues allow yeah. people to dive into his mind a little bit more which yeah. i think is one of the sickest things as a fan of somebody to be able to have that connection with them yeah. it's huge yeah, and I'm most definitely because, you know, when I've went, like, I've went to more smaller shows than, like, bigger events, too. I mean, aside from, like, NASCAR Allo, which is sort of big, but not as big, like, with smaller shows, like, I definitely, like, get that vibe to, you know, interacting with, like, you know, more local artists, you know. And it's in it's interesting, too, because, like, when you're, like, going to, like, a local artist show, you know, you're paying for their event, you know, you're supporting them more than supporting, like, a mainstream artist who's already, like, famous, who already doesn't care about you or like doesn't really notice you like in that sense too so it's like you kind of notice like the care and the respect that you notice like at these like certain events too and it's like it's interesting to like know like these same people like have those same interests as you that are in that same grind that know that same person as well too and yeah it's like very interesting too because like the last time i went to like a very big mainstream show like outside of like photography or anything like that was like maybe 2018 2019 but uh yeah it's like you know as i said it's like totally like different experiences in that sense you know so mm -hmm. i think that's something we're trying to expand on too we're cooking up for the release party right now and we're really trying to make it more than just like a people listening to music kind of thing we're really expanding on you know connecting with him and seeing how the project was made and what steps were taken and so this release party is hopefully going to be more of an experience rather than like a show so yeah with the local scene i think people do need to kind of like put in a little more effort just yeah. to kind of get that connection going because that's really the only thing that is to be taken away from those yeah no, most definitely and uh what have you guys uh like missed like when it came to like performing at live events or like going to like live events in general during covid uh yeah i mean since then like what do you, what have you guys like missed uh, like at that time uh wait you mean you're saying like what did we miss out on during covid no like what have you missed like when it came to like live music since the pandemic you know like going back and then you realize i've you know i've missed that like for like a very long time you know miss like seeing that experience you know getting to that vibe you know being at that venue like interacting with the merch table like the door lady like all that oh yeah you know. all of it man just the whole experience it, it sucked when when it got taken away like so easily and like for so long you were like yo is this like how the world's gonna be now but not nah, just everything man the energy you know those nights where you just go and have fun and that's why it's like it's cool because when we put on events and we put on shows and stuff like that there's like you know it may not be every single person there but like there's certain people that are just like they're having a good time and they're just like not thinking about anything else and that's like super cool to be able to to offer people and it's like those are the moments that like make life matter you know like the the moments that like again you're just not thinking about shit and you're just like having a good time like that's that's what's important so yeah no most definitely man uh just like you know getting back onto topic uh right now you know because you know nowadays too like when we talk about like the underground too or like you know underground like soundcloud music trap music nowadays or just like underground rap in general like a lot of it stems from like the youth like supporting like that culture too like the youth like tapping in you know realizing it's like a good energy good aura and all that you know no bad vibes so like you know to ask uh, this question do you guys feel that the youth can relate more to what you guys bring like music like in general and in your experiences and even just with the current underground like music scene uh, right now yeah i mean i think there's like a lot of hyper pop elements in this project too yeah. so i think that like i feel like a lot of the youth is like on that wave right now and i've definitely like tapped into that kind of sound so i think that 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 will definitely uh connect with like a certain audience that i might not regularly connect with yeah. with my like more lyrical stuff no most definitely and i think um do you feel like it's like more like genuine in that sense too like with what they're like tapping into and what they experience because like you know there's going to be people like outside of that realm that will listen to like a person for the first time but it's like they're not going to get like the whole full, full experience whereas like with the youth it's like they'll listen to like every other song like every other track and like they're gonna say like hey you know this song i can relate to this song i might not relate to but you know at least like they're tapping in like in that sense too so for sure honestly this is the, his most honest project so far like there's a lot of moments where he is vocalizing like where he falls and stuff like that and i think that's something that's really big coming through 
um, it's not so much of a flex as it is kind of like a confession. So I think that's really going to connect with people more than, you know, if you would have like a bigger artist like talking their shit. So kind of connects back to like being a small artist and connecting with new people. He's, you know, trying to tell them, you know, how it is and shit like that. So, yeah, for real. Uh, 100%. And, you know, to, to get back uh, more to Annie, um, were there like, you know, certain like focuses like on the project, you know, like with <laughs> mental health and everything else too? Right. And like, what were like the subject uh, matters that, you know, you like speak more on like on that project? Um, yeah, I mean, I've always touched on like mental health or tried to anyways in my music. I definitely think that I've done it in the most effective way that I have so far. Like he said, like it's my most honest music. Um, I think that it's like, I think it'll make the most sense to the listener um, out of like anything I've made again. But um, yeah, definitely just like, yeah, it touches on that. And it's, it's a super personal album. So it just tells a lot of my stories, I guess. And like Dawson was saying, my faults and like my ups and downs, like as an artist, because I mean, I think the last time I put out this kind of project or this kind of music, I was a much less developed artist. And I was maybe talking more from like a perspective of a person as I was like more so just a person and less of an artist. Whereas now I think I'm speaking more of the of from the perspective of an artist because I've oh, sure. you know, really integrated like my artistry into my life fully no, now. So yeah, most definitely. And you know, like from song to song, are there like also like other like different like perspectives uh, that you know people can notice like when they listen to any like would it be like within third perspective or in like the first person perspective like depending on the situation or uh yeah to be honest yeah um there's also elements of like other people and like people that are in my life and people that I've worked with kind of integrated into the project too which will make more sense when you listen to it but oh, true. um yeah. Yeah, I feel like he's also kind of like he talks a lot about like his desires and stuff like that and like the moments that he has and like he is speaking like on his own experiences and stuff but at the same time it kind of feels like he's telling the whole crew story like me, Cardi, Mimo, Kai, Gord, Jost, all these guys who have been working in the same studio as him for years now like when he's speaking into those like you know desires and stuff like that he's speaking for us too that's what it feels like so yeah. i think that was a big piece of one of the reasons i connected with this project personally yeah. it's like when i was talking about those moments and like those times where like stuff everything just makes sense yeah. and like the energy is right any yeah. is that in a project in yeah. a music project and like that's for me like when i listen to it through and through that's what it sounds like to me that's like what it makes me feel it's like yeah. you're listening to it and you're like i'm supposed to be listening to this i'm supposed yeah. to be right here right now True, true. Like outside of like that whole like perspective, uh, when speaking on Annie, um, like outside of it, like how do you guys uh, both deal with you know your mental health as a like, creative, like in that sense too, and you know with everything uh, going on like nowadays, do you feel like it's like very like overwhelming at times? We're busy. I think I'm busy. <laughs> I think we've gotten better at balancing it than um, we used to be. I think we're like honestly more busy than we ever have been, but we've gotten like better at again balancing it so just like i don't know it's like stressful but i'm also just a lot better at dealing with the stress because i used to be like oh i have to get this 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 and this done yeah. but now i'm just like yeah i have to get that done but I'll, I'll get i'll get it done i'll get there and that's also why like we took so long with this project and we just took yeah. our time with it because i was like i don't want to rush anything i yeah. just wanted to come naturally no 100 percent and you know, like, I've noticed, like, there's, like, a lot of, like, growth from, like, the start until now, and I've noticed that, like, with Golden in that sense, too, so, like, even in those, like, last two projects uh, that you had where it's, like, more, like, unfocused, you know, more focused on, like, finding, like, different styles, like, you know, with lyrical rap and everything else to now where you have this focus project where you're focusing on a unique sound that kind of, like, hits uh, that melody, um, have you noticed, like, like, that growth, like, from that to uh, this new project in that sense? yeah for sure um again i mean i used to just be super like bar for bar like lyric 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 yeah. um and now there's a lot of like repetitive tendencies like melodic breaks and bridges and just like moments that i kind of just let the the music carry itself and carry me rather than being so technical about everything yeah and in terms of like you know as creatives have you felt like you've grown as creatives from the start until now Oh yeah, 
a lot <laughs> a lot that's like the cool thing is i mean we've been at it for a long time but we've seen a lot of progress and we're still not like where we want to be but i don't really i don't think we ever really will be yeah. but i mean i can say confidently that i'm i'm an artist now which yeah. is cool yeah. so we were sure. kind of talking about this last night too i was i asked him i was like do you think your music sounds the way that you thought it would five years ago and it's kind of crazy to think about you know the first couple of tracks you recorded the first photos that you took to the point where you are now making like an entire conceptual project that you know has a delivery and a message behind it that's completely different of how you thought it would sound kind of thing him being like this huge like hip-hop like rap kind of head now to producing melodics with like verses in between and yeah. stuff like that and so the growth is by far like between his projects this is the biggest jump by any means yeah, yeah it's like i couldn't even have imagined the music that i'm making now at that time because i just wasn't open-minded enough to understand it i probably would have been like yo this is trash because i just again i wouldn't i, I wasn't ready I, I wouldn't have understood it but yeah. i think that it's sonically super unique and sound yeah and you know like even in that sense too do you ever felt like any like at that peak uh right now within growth that you know i'm at this position right now where i'm like very like happy with what i've put out or do you feel like that peak might go like a little bit like a little bit more higher like in that sense i mean there's always like a next step you know i'm i'm also while we're doing all this promo prep and and finishing off all these things for annie and I have all that on my mind. I still take the time to record every day and, and make a track that's totally in a new realm and, and you know, onto the next sound from Annie. So, I mean, yeah. I'm always working towards the next step and I always want to make something better than what I made because it's like, it's not like I made the best song ever yet, yeah. right? So it's like, you know, arguably yeah. there, there's always a next step. There's always yeah. something higher, but I'm super confident in it and I'm like super happy with what I've created. And it's again, by far, like, I mean, I listen to it on repeat and I've never done that with my own music before. So. Oh, true. No, I'm a simple man. And you know, like, yeah, you, you kind of have like a nice uh, shirt right there, you know, Mac Miller and all that. Like uh, I know with like Mac Miller, like he's like very like in introspective in like a lot of his music, like even with his older uh, music nowadays with watching movies with his uh, posthumous uh, project circles and, even with his uh, last project uh, before he passed away too. So were there like elements of like introspect introspection and all that? And like, even with the stuff that like Mac Miller did like on any in that sense too. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Mac's always an inspiration. Um, and I definitely, I, I grew as a person, like as I was making this project and like a lot of aspects of my life have changed and the way that I look at things have changed. So like, that's definitely something that is a strong, you know, theme in, in, in the project and a strong purpose behind the music oh, sounds true. the way, sounding the way it is. True. No, I know what you mean, man. And, you know, just to close off uh, for a bit, um, you don't have like any regrets or like, what, are there like any regrets that you guys have like before we go in that sense? It's deep we've messed up like a lot like there's like a lot of shoots that like happened that never went out or didn't go the way they were supposed to but honestly i feel like it was all worth it because you know working for four years you're bound to have failures but we've learned from each and every single one of those and this project really feels like it took every single one of those failures to like make this project be what it is kind of thing this project is a lot about, you know, learning self growth and shit like that. And the way that we've produced it, we've just kind of mastered everything that we've done in the past and put it into one thing that is just perfect now. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like everybody makes mistakes. Everybody has stuff where you're like, uh, maybe I shouldn't have done that or that wasn't worth it type beat. But it's like everything that we've done has put us where we are now. And again, all we've done is, is progressed. Like, even though, it, it hasn't been no straight up it's ups and downs but like oh we've 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 come a long way so it's like every mistake we've made every song in the recycle bin every corny photo we didn't use yeah. is like it all led to that next photo slapping or it all led to that again like one in 30 tracks you're gonna release like you gotta make those other 29 tracks in order to make that one you know what i mean all right most definitely and uh 
I know like the project's like the important thing right now and like the album release party. So like those are definitely gonna come soon. Um, is there like an expected date uh, for those two or like uh, it's still like in the process? July thirtieth, the project's dropping. I'm oh, probably right. doing the release party the night before that. Oh, That's true. the plan. That night, I guess, what drop at like midnight, but yeah, true, true. July 30th, that's when we're dropping. True, true. And I guess there's like a set location uh, for the album release party, or not yet, oh, true, not true. yet. No, right. we're still we're setting that up right now, but yeah, you know, <laughs> <Fine. All right. laughs> there will be one by the time this drops. <laughs> uh, true. <laughs> true. And if you guys uh, want to follow Animation and uh, Dawson, it's Animation Raps on IG and all of the platforms, and Dawson.iso on all platforms. I think we already explained on that, uh, but. Do you guys have any like closing remarks you'd like to say as well? Project's really cool. the best thing that we've ever made together, like by far. Thanks. Nothing else comes close to it. My piece and your piece separately stand is like amazing pieces of art, and together they came and just made something beautiful to the point where people are crying about it. You know, the brothers are praising it over and over again. So I'm just Go happy stream to make sure. a new idea by animation. Don't listen to other people. Do whatever you want. That's it. Yo, guys, <laughs> you know, thank you uh, for pulling up. You know, it's dope conversation. Da Dawson, you know, thank you for coming by again onto the pod, too. You know, Annie, you know, thank you for coming by for the very first time on the pod. Yeah, bro. A lot thank of dope uh, conversations are right Appreciate there with this project, you. and we'll definitely uh, put that link in, too. And, you know, this is Josh, also known as Yashu of TLY Talks, episode uh, 37. It's going to drop on all platforms soon. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Bus Buzzsprout, you know, where you get your podcasts. If you're on apple podcast you know make sure to give five stars or any other stars that uh, depending on the situation too and yeah man go stream uh any like when it drops you know in july and all that you know so definitely i uh, tap that in and you know this is josh also known as yashu with dawson iso and animation episode 37 of tly talk signing off <laughs>